Yo, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome back. Babylon Talmud, Daf Samach Gimel of Masech the Brachos. This is the last full double-sided page of Masech the Brachos. We are really, really getting very, very close to the uh, end of the Masech, which is pretty cool. Um, also a bunch of Agadotas today, so I'm, I'm just going to jump in. And uh, so, let's, so let's get started. Mm, we're about seven or eight lines into the page in Daf Samachim al Let's do it, friends. So the Mishnah says that in the Beis Hamikdash, they would um, at the end they wouldn't just say like Baruch Atash, Baruch Atashem Chonin Adas or something. They would say like Baruch Atashem Lokei Sub Min Olam Bar Olam, etc. So the Gemara says Kolkach Lama. Why all of this? I don't really understand what this Kolkach Lama question is. The Fisha Ain Onin Amin B'Mikdash because they don't say uh, Amin in the Beis Hamikdash, right? They, you know, normally we say somebody says a Baruch, you say Amin, right? So, but in the Beis Hamikdash they wouldn't say Amin. They would say. Uh, How do we know that they don't say Amen in the base of Mikdash? Shinemar, as the Pasuk says, Kumu Hashem min olam olam, that this is a Pasuk from Nehemia. Uh, basically, a whole bunch of like Levim got up and they said, Go and bless um, Hashem your God, min olam olam. so that's like the Bracha, right? The Omer, and it says, Vivarchu Shem Kvodech and they will bless <coughs> your um, honorable name, which after all, which even after all their blessings, your name is still even more lofty than anything that they could po- any way that they could possibly praise you, which is basically the same thing as Baruch Shem Kvod Machus Olam So that's how we see that in the Beis Hamikdash, uh, they would say Kilu Baruch Ata Hashem Lokeisa Amen Olam Bar Olam, and then the response would be Baruch Shem Kvod Machus Olam Boed. Yachol Kol Abrachos Kulan Teilo and Bracha Tila Achas. Is it possible that they would basically Wait until the end of all the brachos, right? And then after, like all the brachos, they would say Baruch Shem Kvod Machus Olam Vod. Tamlo Mamram Makol Brachu Sihila Al Kol Brachu Bracha Tainlo Tihila. No, after each and every single bracha, they would say Baruch Shem Kvod Machus Olam Vod. Fine, very exciting stuff. Hiskinu Shei Adam Shal B'Shlom Chaveru V'Chule. So it says in the Mishnah that they made a takana that people should, when they say, when they greet each other, they should mention God's name like Hashem Imachem. I've had in mind for like the last week since I learned this to like say Hashem Imachem to people instead of like Shalom Aleichem. I'm not sure I remember it even once, but maybe I'll get used to it. We'll see how it goes over. I don't know. Maybe it won't be that cool anyways. <clears throat> we'll have to see. My Va'omer. What's this Va'omer, right? The Pasuk base, the, the Mishnah basically gives four proofs for why you're allowed to say, for like saying Hashem's name. Right, it brings one proof from Boaz, another one from the angel with Gidon. Then it brings another pasuk from Mishle, and then it brings a pasuk from Eislah uh, Sos Lashem. So let's see. Maiva Omer, what are all these pasukim? So v'chitem Boaz midai to the nafshe So if you're going to say, yeah, granted that, sure, Boaz said Hashem Machem to the to the harvesters in his field, but Boaz maybe was a maverick, maybe he was doing his own thing. But we're not we're not necessarily going to learn from that. So Tashma Hashem Imcha Gibor Achayel. So then we say no, but we have this other pasuk by this angel by um with this angel by Gid- by Gidon. So if the, if it's good enough for the angel, then it's good enough for us. Fine. V'chitema Malach Hu Dekamer Le Le Gidon. If we can say yeah, but that was an angel saying to Gidon. We're not necessarily going to learn from that. So Tashma Al Tavos Kizakna Imecha. So there's an interesting drasha on this pasuk of do not basically. Um, belittle, right? Uh, imecha is like zikna, zakna imecha is, is, is sort of, um, understood in this context to mean the elders of umascha, the elders, right? Zikna umascha, the elders of your nation, meaning don't say that Boaz just did it on his own. No, rather you should be learning from the elders of your generation. And, and therefore, if, if Boaz um, you know, greeted the harvesters by saying Hashem Yimachem, so we can learn from that, and we can also say Hashem Yimachem and um, greet people saying God's name. The Omer and another pasuk is Eis Lasos Hashem Eferu Sorasecha, that you are permitted to sort of nullify God's Torah um, if if it's in the interest of doing the will of God. So in this case, also to sort of um, in a certain sense, profane God's name by just using God's name for just regular people, it's allowed since it's in the interest of um, of Bakay Shalom Brad Feu, as Rashi in the Mishnah explained. Amarava Aikram Mireshe Lisefe Madrish, Mesefe Lireshe Madris. 
uh, Papa, uh, Rava points out that this pasa can be learned either from front to end or from end to begin, or beginning to end or end to beginning. So, Meshul is safe, Imajish. How would you learn out this pasa from the beginning to the end? So, Ezla Sos Lashem, it's the time to do for God. My Tom, how come? Mishum de Feris Secha, right? So, the, we're doing for God because people are being. Um, nullifying your Torah. Okay. Majus, you can also dash in the Pasuk from the end to the beginning. There are those who were made for your Torah, like Eliyahu on the mountain of Carmel, and I guess like over here, saying God's name um, when just greeting your friend because of the interest of um, do, you know, doing the will of God. Tanya, we learn in a Bryce, Hillel Azokin Omer, says Hillel Azokin, Bishasa Machnisin Pazer. At a time when the Torah scholars are like holding back their Torah and not sharing it with people, then it's your responsibility to go out and spread it. Bishas Amafazrim, but if there are plenty of Torah, uh, Torah scholars who are out and spreading the Torah, so then Kanei, so then you just, you know, other people are doing it, you can then just go to the base Medrash and, 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 and learn. Vimra Isa Dorsha Torah Chaviva Alav Pazer. If you see a generation that the Torah is beloved to them, will then go out and assist them and, and spread Torah. Shenemar Yeshma Fazav Vinosaf Od. Right, there are those who, who, who spread, uh, who, who are able to spread and gain even more. Meaning, so in this case, he would, um, be spreading Torah and it would be a very good thing. But if you see a generation that they are not fond of the Torah, well then, Kanes, then hold back and don't go out spreading Torah if they're not going to be receptive. Shenemar Esla Sos Lashem Efer Torah Secha. It's time to do for God. And to just stick to yourself and learn on your own with that instead of going out and spreading Torah because they fear Torah secha because they are not, um, you know, because they are nullifying the Torah and not giving, and not giving it respect. Darsh bar kapara, bar kapara, darshan. Zalas, if, um, merchandise is being sold for cheap, kabots kane mina. So then you should go and, uh, purchase a whole bunch of it because it's cheap and then you could buy it Right? Buy low, sell high. Interesting stuff going on in the stock market these days. Basa delays gavar, tamane vigvar. In a place where there is no, um, person. So you should talk be a person, Darton. Amr Abai, meaning in a place where there's no tamar chacham. So if, so you could be the tamar chacham. So Amr Abai, shmamina basa de is gvar, taman lo te gvar. So Abai says, and that implies that in a place where there is, um, uh, a person there, well then you shouldn't. Kilo, if there's a place where they already have a Tamil Chacham, so then you shouldn't be the Tamil Chacham there. So Pshita, this is obvious. No, the, the reason why Abai had to say this is in meaning, in a, if you go to a place where there's already Tamil Chacham, but you're equally as much of a Tamil Chacham as that person, um, even, so in that place, do, do not replace him, you know. And if, if they already have a person there, do not replace that person. Darj bar kapara, ezo, ezo hi parsha ktana shkoku fetora tulinba. Says bar kapara, what is a small little parsha that, that all bodies of Torah are dependent on the small little parsha? So this little pasuk, it says, in all of your ways, you should know God, or chosecha, and he will straighten out your ways. So if, if, in every single thing that you do, in whatever you do in life, Right, you have in mind that um, there's some kind of spiritual um, aspect to it, or you're doing it, you know, as a, a with God in mind to some less to some degree. So then He will straighten out your ways and and ensure that you succeed. Amar Rava said, Rava, Vera, even if you're doing an avera. And then there's a a note over here in the Gospel Tzionami, which adds, Amar Papa and says, Rav Papa, Hanu da Amar Inch. This is what people say, Ganva Apu Machtar to Rachmanakari. If you have a, a thief. Who basically tunneled into somebody's house, so clearly he's doing something wrong. He's robbing somebody, yet he's still going to pray at the entrance to this tunnel that he built that it, that that he should should succeed. Darash bar kapara the olam yilamid adam as beno umanus nekiya v'kala bar kapara taught that a person should always teach his child a very uh, lightweight and clean profession. Mahi, what is that? Mavchista machta de talmiusa. Uh, that seems to be defined as um, cutting gems, cutting diamonds, right? It's a business that I guess, you know, better I guess to cut the diamonds than to mine for them. Uh, but you want a, uh, the goal is to get a business that is, I guess, profitable and uh, not too uh, difficult, whatever. I don't know, maybe 
whatever. There's all sorts of interesting professions that are nice that check those boxes, I guess. But that's the goal, right? A, a, a profession that is a nice, clean profession that I guess is also profitable. Tanya, we learn in the Bible, Rabbi Omer says, Rabbi, um, a person shouldn't have too many friends around his house. Shinemar, as the Pazak says, that if you have a person who has too many friends, so you can end up uh, leading to like fights and stuff. So Tanya, Rebbe Omer, says, Rebbe, a person shouldn't uh, say, you know, appoint like a, what, like a butler or something in his house, so, somebody to basically take care of all of his affairs for him. She ilmule lo nitna lomina potifar as Yosef apotropos b'soch beso loba also davar. Right, the whole story with uh, Yosef and the wife of Potiphar only happened, you know, if, if, if Potiphar wouldn't have um, appointed Yosef to be taking care of his house, well, then that whole thing never would have happened, which, I mean, ultimately, it ended up being okay, right? That sort of got the snowball thing that ended up with, like, Yosef being the king and everything. Well, assistant to the king. But in any event, um, the, all that, I guess there was also a lot of negative things that happened there as well. So all that happened because Potiphar um, appointed Yosef as sort of to take care of everything in his house. So better to just avoid that. Tani Rabbi Omer, How come the Parsha of Nazir is immediate, right? Nazir, of course, is somebody who makes a vow a, a, um, that he's going to stay away from wine. He's not going to cut his hair. not going to become Tamei to uh, Mason. So why is that immediately following the Parsha of Sota, which has come up a few times as well, which is when um, a husband suspects his wife of uh, being with another man and then she goes to the base of Mikdash and has to drink this whole thing. So how come the Pasuk of Nazir interestingly comes immediately following Sota? So lo malach to say to you, shukalarua sota bikukuli azar atmu minayayin. That anybody who witnesses a Sota in her degradation when she's, uh, you know, on Hara bias, uh, drink, you know, going through that whole drinking thing. So they will say, wow, you know, I am never going near wine. Uh, the implication being that because of wine and partying too much, it leads to a, a sota situation. Somebody who sees that is just going to say, I don't want anything to do with that, and they'll become a Nazir. Amar Chizkiah, Brei, the Rabbi Parnach, says of Chizkiah, the son of Rabbi Parnach, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Lama nismucha parsha sota lefajas trumas, umaisris. How come the parsha of sota is immediately following a parsha that talks about truma and maiser? Anybody has truma and maister and he doesn't, doesn't give it to the kohen. Well, then he's going to need uh, a kohen because his wife uh, will uh, create a situation. There will be a situation with his wife in which he will suspect her of being with another man. And then we'll have to go to um, the Beis HaMikdash and uh, go th- and get a, get a kohen to do the whole sota drinking thing. That if a person right, says that, well, that positive generally means it means that a person with his like truma and stuff, it's up to him. He could choose whichever coin he wants to give it to, right? No coin is the right to just come and take a person's truma. The person has the is in control of who he can give his truma to. Um, but we're understanding it to be over here. Vish es kedoshav lo yuyu. If a person uh, ensures, if a person insists that his kedoshav, that his truma, remains to him, i.e., he doesn't give it to a kohen. The samachle it says right afterwards, ish ish kisista ishto. It gets into the whole parsha of sota uchsev, and it says by sota vevi ish as ishto vegomer that will bring his wife to the kohanim, etc. So we see that if he doesn't give truma and meiser, he's going to end up having to go to kohen anyways, uh, and this time in a much more um, uncomfortable context. Not only that, not only um, will you end up having uh, to go to the coin with the whole sota thing, but you'll actually need truma and meiser. What what truma and meiser? Meiser ani. You'll be a poor person, and you don't need other people's uh, uh, donations. Shneimar, it says, "Vishes kedoshav lo yu that a person is kachim lo yu. I guess it's being darshan as like they are going to be needed ultimately for himself when he needs meiser ani. Amar of Nachum by Yitzchak. Says of Nachman Yisach, "V'im nasnan nisanan sof misasher." But if he gives meiser, he gives all of his meiser properly. Well, then he's going to become wealthy. Shneimar, as the pasuk says, "Isha shayitin lekohen lo yiyeh." That it, right, if a right, if a person gives to the kohen as true men meiser, then lo yiyeh, right, lo yiyeh mamon harbe. He's going to have a lot of money. So that's a little plug for giving meiser. Amar of Huna ben Amar of Huna bar Brechia mishum Rabbi Elazar kapar. 
Anybody who mentions God's name or includes God's name when he's in a difficult situation, right? Such as when he says Baruch Dayna Emes if somebody passes away, or if when he's in a situ- uh, difficult situation, he um, you know prays to God to help him. So then Kofun Lo Panasa, so we double his um, Parnasa, his you know income. Shenemar, as the pasuk says, Raya Shadai B'Tzarecha, right? If God will be uh, with you uh, in your difficult times. The kesef to asfoslach, to asfoslach, and we're defining to afos as to double. Therefore, we will double your money. Rabbi Shmuel ben Nachmani am a panasasum the ofefes lo ketzipor. Rabbi Shmuel ben Nachmani says that his um, panasa, his money will fly to him like a fegela. Shenemar, as the pasuk says, the kesef to asfoslach, and the money will fly to you. Okay. Amr Reb Tevi, Amr Reb Yosha says Reb Tevi in the name of Reb Yosha. Kol amirape atzmo midivrei Torah. Anybody who weakens, weakens himself from the words of Torah, he will not have strength to stand on a difficult day. Shinemar, as the Pasuk says, Hisra uh, Pisa Biyom Tzara Tzar Kochacha. So Hisra Pisa, if you have weakened yourself from Torah, right? So Biyom Tzara Tzar Kochacha, then on a difficult day, um, you will not have strength. Amr <clears throat> Ami, Parmasna Amr Shmuel, Afil Mitzvah Achas, even if you only weakened uh, we're lax on like one mitzvah, then you're going not going to have your uh, strength. Shnei or pisa mikomakum. It says that if you've been weak, if you've been lax, and just mikomakum doesn't de- de- define how lax you've been, just any degree of being lax. Amr of Safra says the holy of Safra. Rabbi Abo have mishtai. Rabbi Abo would say, Kishiyard Chanina ben Achi Rabbi Yoshua legola. When Chanina, the son uh, of the brother of Rabbi Yoshua, so when Rabbi Yoshua Ben Hananya, like the Rabbi Yoshua, when his nephew Rabbi Hanina went to Bavu, he continued to make leap years and establish months, whether they're 30 days or 29 days, etc., from Chutzlarts. Now, this is supposed to only be done in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim. And he was doing this from Chutzlarts. So, so the, from Eretz Yisrael, they sent after Rabbi Hanina Ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua. Uh, they sent two Tamil Chacham after him to get him to stop this business. Rabbi Yossi ben Kippar, Uven ben Oshel ben Kvuta. They sent these two rabbis, Rabbi Yossi ben Kippar and the grandson of Zechariah ben Kvuta. Kevin Shura Osam, Amrloim, Lama Basen. So when um, Rabbi Hanina ben Achi Rabbi Yoshua saw these two Tamil Chacham, he said, Wow, what are you guys doing here? Amlo Lomo Torah Banu. They said, We came to learn Torah. So Hikriz Aleim. So then, um, Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua, he announced about these two Tamil Chacham that came, Anoshim alalu gdolei ador heim. These two men are among the greatest of the generation. Vavoseim shimshu b'veis ha-mikdash, and their fathers served in the Beis ha-mikdash, in the temple. Ke'osa shashaninu, as we learned in Yoma, Zechari ben Kvutal Omer, that uh, Zechari ben Kvutal says, Harbe paimim karisi lefanav b'sefer Daniel. That um, Zechari ben Kavutal said that many times he read in front of the Kohen Gadol on the night of Yom Kippur from the book of Daniel. So we see that Zechari ben Kavutal served in the Beis Hamikdash by the by the Kohen Gadol, and this is his grandson that was sent to Bavel to stop uh, Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua from making leap years and stuff in Bavel. Hischil hu Now something uh, peculiar started happening. Whenever Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua would say that something was Tame, these two rabbis would say that it's actually Tahor. Who also ve matir. He would say that something is Asur, forbidden. They would say it's permitted. Hichruzalem. So at that point then, Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua, he then declared, Anashim alalu shal shavheim. These guys are, are, are nobodies. These guys are nudniks. Shal tohuheim. They are like of, uh, I don't know, what's tohu? Like when the world was tohu before it existed, it's just like, I don't know, messed up kind of stuff. Amrulo, kvar banisa, viata, yacholistor, to it. And they responded to Rabbi Yoshua, ben Achir, Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua, and they said, well, too late, Buster. You already built us up to say that we are the greatest of the generation. You can't um, destroy that reputation now. It's too late. Um, You've already built a fence. You cannot breach it. He said to them, 
He said to them, how come every time I say that something is tahor, you say, every time I say something is tame, you say it's tahor. And he also vata matirim. Every time I say that something is asr, you say it's mutter. Amrulo, mipnei sha'atim ma'abir shanim v'kuvei achadashim v'chutz l'aretz. They said to him, it's because you are making leap years and setting up, you know, the dates of the, 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 the length of the months in chutz l'aretz. And that is not allowed. That's why we have come to try to, um, you know, uh, challenge you. Amr Laim, he said, so to which Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua said to them, Valo Akiva ben Yosef, I'm Abishan of Kovea Chodashim Chutzlart, but Rabbi Akiva apparently visited, uh, Naharda, apparently Rabbi Akiva visited Chutzlart, and, um, apparently when he was there, he was, um, making leap years and setting months. So, he said, if Rabbi Akiva can do it, I can do it. Amr Lo, they said to Rabbi Hanina, uh, ben Achi Rabbi Yoshua, Hanach Rabbi Akiva Shloiniach Kamos Ba'Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva was different because there was nobody in Eretz Yisrael as great as, as him. That, therefore, he was allowed to make leap years and set months from Chutz Laaretz. Amar Loim, to which Rabbi Chinina Ben Achi Rabbi Yoshua responded to them, Afani Loinachti Kamos Ba'Eretz Yisrael. Also me. There's nobody as great as me in Eretz Yisrael. That's why I'm allowed to make leap years and set months in Chutz Laaretz. Amar Lo, they said to him. They said that's not actually true. The the young goats that you have left in uh, in Eretz Yisrael have actually grown up to be very strong, uh, full grown gro- goats with horns. I.e., you know the the younger students that you left that, that you left in Eretz Yisrael have actually grown up to be um, quite significant tamid chacham of, of their own right, and they should be making the leap years and setting the months, not you from chutzlaitz. Vehem shagunu etzlecha, and they are the ones who have sent us to you to stop you. Vehein amulanu, and this is what they have told us. Lechu go veimrulo, and say to Rabbi Chinina ben Achi Rabbi Yoshua, b'shmenu in our names, im shomea muto v'mlavi ebenidoi. If he listens, great, and he stops being uh, setting up uh, leap years and, and and setting months in chutzlarts. If he listens, then great. If not, then we will excommunicate him. And then also tell all the other people who are there in Bavil, um, that if you're going to listen to us, i.e. to stop listening to Abchinina ben Achir of Yoshua, then great. And if not, well then you may as well, Yalu Lahar, you may as well go and find a mountain to go up to and serve a Vodazara. Achia Yivna Mizbeach, Achia, who was one of the great leaders of Bavel, he'll build a Mizbeach, an altar. Chananya Yenagim Bechinor, Chananya, who was a Levi, Right, apparently, Rabbi Yoshua is a Levi. So he will play the harp. And he'll all just be kofar. He'll all just deny God. And declare that you'd have no portion with the God of Israel. So that was pretty a pretty intense statement, declaration for these two Tamil Chachamim um, to say that Rabbi Hanina uh, ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua would be in a an excommunication if he doesn't listen to them and that everybody else will be just be, be basically be considered kofrim deniers of God. So they all broke out. Go, go, they all cried out. They all broke down in, cry, in, in, in crying, in tears. And they said, God forbid, so we do have a portion with the God of Israel. And how come they had to make such a big deal out of the fact that Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Yeshua was making leap years and setting months in Chutzlaretz. Why is it so significant? Because it says that from Tzion, the Torah goes out and the word of God from Jerusalem and therefore, um, you know, setting up leap years and setting months should be happening from Israel. It should not be happening from Chutzlaretz. Okay, so I understand, you know, if we're going to say that Rabbi Chinina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua was saying that things were Tahor and they and these two rabbis were saying that they're Tameh, uh, that they're tame. That's fine because they're being machmir. Ella hu metame ve metayer and hechi have it. How could it be that Rabbi Chanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua was saying that things were tame and they were actually saying that it's tahor? But I thought we learned in a brisa. Chacham she metame ein chaver rashi letayer. Also ein chaver rashi lahatir. If one chacham says that something is tame, his friend cannot say that it's tahor. If he says that it's asur, his friend cannot say that it's mutar. So kasavir ki echi dlo nigzru basre dlo nigru basre. Um, but they figured that in this case, it would be allowed to be meta, uh, metaher, that which Rabbi Chinina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua was metaher, no, was metame, 
they said that they're allowed to say it's tahor, um, you know, it with the goal, since there was that goal of making sure that um, people would not follow Rabbi Hanina ben Achir Rabbi Yoshua, since he was doing something inappropriate by making leap years and setting months in Chutz Laretz. Toner Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, Kishinich Mansur Rabbi Seinu L'Kerem B'Yavne, oh, when our rabbis entered into um, the vineyard in Yavne. So Rashi explains that it wasn't literally a vineyard. It was actually because, you know, the students, I guess, in the yeshiva, they would sit in rows, just like the rows of a vineyard, right? So the sort of, it sounds almost like the yeshiva in Yavne. So there were there four Tanayim, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yossi, and Rabbi Nechemya, who were all students of Rabbi Akiva. Also, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Rabbi Yossi, Aglili. I'm not sure if he was as well. Anyways, Pasku Kulen Bechav Bechvor Achsanya. Oh, so they all opened up and they started by, um, you know, talking in the honor of their host, right? Sometimes we'll go to like a place and somebody will get up to speak and will say that he wants to be Poseach Bechvor Achsanya. This is where it comes from, right? To uh, open, to start off by thanking, by honoring the host. Vidarshu, and they, they gave little shtikl Torahs. Pasach Rabbi Yehuda, Rosh Hamadabim B'chomakum, so Rabbi Yehuda, who was the first speaker in every place, and this is re- referencing a Gemara in Shabbos that we'll learn in around a month from now. So B'chavod Torah, and he started uh, in, in, in the honor of Torah, which is interesting because we just said that they all opened up in the honor of the host, and uh, Rabbi Yehuda, who was the first one to speak, actually um, was at, opened up talking about the honor of the Torah. Vidarash and Idarshan, Right? That after the whole thing with the Cheda Egel, um, it says that Moshe took the Ohel Moed and he, he pitched it outside of the entire camp of Israel. And we make a Kavachomer. Right? The Ark of God that Moshe moved outside of the camp of Israel. And the camp of Israel was 12 mil. Amr Torah, the Torah says, Vayakomevakish Hashem. Yetzei el oel moed, right? Anybody who was a mevakesh Hashem, Hashem, anybody who was a seeker of God would walk those 12 mil in order to go to the Aaron and to go to Moshe. Well, Tamidi Chachamim Shehochim Meir Leir Mimedina Lemedina, right? Tamidi Chachamim who travel from one city to another city, from one country to another country, Lomo Torah in order to study Torah, Allah Chazkam Vachama, certainly they would be called seekers of God. V'dibar Hashem el Moshe panim apanim. The Eved Shter spoke to Moshe face to face. Amar B'Yitzchak, Amul Hakadosh Baruch Hu Moshe. The Eved Shter said to Moshe, Moshe, Ani va'ata nazbi panim balacha. You and I, we will have like uh, happy faces in 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 discussing halacha. Ikedam to those who say kacha melo Hakadosh Baruch Hu. This is what the Eved Shter said to Moshe. Le Moshe, Kishem she'ani is b'ati l'cha panim. So the Abishra says to Moshe, just like I showed you a happy face, you know, uh, when, when, even though after the Chet Egel, you know, I took care of you ultimately. So I want you to show a favorable face to the Jewish people and return the Oel Moed back into the camp and not leave it outside of the camp. The Abishra said to Moshe, now they will say, well, if God is angry for the, because the Yidin made the, um, Chere Egel, and even their leader is angry that Moshe, right, Moshe is angry. We, we see that he moved his, uh, tent outside of the camp of Israel. So, right, oh, so then people will say, what's going to be with the Yidin? If God's angry with them and their leader's angry with them, so who, you know, what's going on with these people? They're like in limbo. So rather, God said to Moshe, If you are, you know, willing to return the tent, the Oel Moed, to its proper place in the camp, then good. If not, then Yoshua Benun, your student, will serve instead of you. This is what the puzzle says, And you will return to the um, camp. Amar Rava said, Rava Afalpichain, Loyotza Davil Vatala. Even so, this thought, you know, even just the thought of Yoshua ben Nun serving instead of Moshe, that didn't become completely, uh, nullified. Shneemar, as it says, Umshar so Yoshua ben Nun nar liyomish mitocha oel. That Yoshua ben Nun, the lad, uh, did, never moved from within the oel, i.e., he still, I guess, uh, preserved a very, uh, significant position there, um, by Moshe ben Nun. The old Pasach Rabbi Yudah Bichvod Torah. And Rabbi Yudah said another shtikl Torah um, in the honor of Torah. 
Midarash, and he said, Haskes Ushma Yisrael. Right, so we learned this actually in the con- in the context to learn that you have to have kavana when you say Shema. Right, Haskes, pay attention, Ushma Yisrael, when you saying Shema Yisrael. But um, the puzzle says, pay attention, Israel. Hayom azen la'am. On this day, you have become a nation. Vichi also hayom nitna Torah li Yisrael. What do you mean? Is that the day that the Torah was given to the Yidden? When Moshe Rabbeinu said, Haskes Ushma Yisrael, was that the day that the Torah was given to the Yidden? That it says that on this day you have become a nation. Also, Yom so far that was at the very end of 40 years. They'd, got, they'd received the Torah 40 years old, earlier. That's when they had become um, a nation. Rather to teach you that the Torah is so beloved, beloved on the people who learn it every single day that it's like the day that they received the Torah from, from Mount Sinai. Amar bitanchum bre de vichia ish kfar ako teda you should know shre elvim koy kriashma shachvers vaivis person reads kriashma every day and every night ve ve erev echad eno kore domek mishel akar kriashma meolam and one night he doesn't read kriashma it's as if he never read kriashma his entire life I'm not exactly sure how to understand this uh, I don't I think maybe I looked at him the safari and they said like um, because he can't make it up or something like ilu each thing is its own self-contained unit and I guess because of that. You know, every day is new. Every day is significant in its own right. Haskes, asu kitos, kitos, vasku batora. Oh, so haskes is like make katim, make groups, make, make lots of little groups and study Torah. The fisheina Torah nicknames el bechabura because the only way for Torah to be acquired is with a chabura. And that's why we have the WhatsApp group, right? And that way we're not all just studying Torah on our own, but we're coming together and we can discuss it. Kedu Rabbi Yossi Bab Hanina, like Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina, the Amr Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina, my dechsev cherev al abadim v'no alu that the sword is in the um, like liars, the fake people v'no alu, and they will become uh, I guess silly. Cherev al soneim shel tamidei chachamim. There is a sword on you know a euphemism for the tamidei chachamim sheyoshim bad bevad boskim b'torah who are sitting alone and studying Torah. V'load not only that elashim etapshim they become stupid. Ksevach v'no alu ksevasim asher no alu asher no alu. It says over here, Vino Alu. And it says, after, um, it says, Ana Tashis Aleinu Chatas Ashano Alnu Vashir Chatanu. It says that after Miriam got Saras. I don't know why No Alnu there means like being stupid, but the Gemara wants to assume that over there means being stupid. So also, if you, um, study Torah by yourself, you will become stupid. But oh, not only that, Ela Shechotim, you are gonna sin, Shenamar, Vashir Chatanu, right? It says, Ashano Alnu Vashir Chatanu. So also, if you learn, if you study Torah alone, you are sinning. Ibai Seymour, if you want to say Mehacha from here, Noalu Sare Tsoan. Okay, that the, um, that the officers of Tsoan became like, I don't know, stupid or confused. Tavar Acher, or another way to understand Haskes Ushma Yisrael, is Kitisu Atzmechem Adivre Torah, break yourselves on Divre Torah, right? Kid the Amr Reish Lakish, as Reish Lakish says, the Amr Reish, right, the Amr Reish Lakish, Minayin She'en Divre Torah, Miskaimen El Bemisha, Memis Atzmolel. Divrei Torah are only going to be established in somebody who kills himself over there, it does, over it. It doesn't literally mean to kill yourself, but it means to, you know, work really hard to try to accomplish uh, in Torah. Shnemar, Zosa Torah, this is the Torah. How do you kilu, acquire the Torah? Adam Kiyomus Baal, somebody who kills himself in the Oel Torah, right, in the, in the study halls, in the Beis Medrash, somebody who's, you know, willing to be stuck on, on one word of Rashi for a week, right? So he might be stuck for that week, but that's, a little, that's how it will become a Tamil Chacham is by really, really putting in the time and the effort and the investment and killing himself to really be able to, to, to thrive with Torah study. Dover Acher Has Kei Sushma Yisrael Has Vachar Kach Kates Right? So Has means to listen and then afterwards ask questions. Right? First listen to your teacher. Get it the first time around even if you have questions. Then once you get it the first time around that is when you um, you know start to then break it down and ask questions and really get into the details. But first sort of do a peripheral understanding of it Right, listen to your teacher, don't interrupt, and then afterwards you kind of break it down and try to get to the to the uh, depths of it. Also in computer programming, there's something called um, red green refactor. I think I said that right. Right. Basically, first you start with a failing test and then you just make the test pass, which is how you're like your first time around when you're writing software, and then you refactor to make it to make it actually like good quality code. But first you just want to get it to work. That's the first um, focus, and then you and then you get it to sort of look good. Kedurava, like Rava, the Amar, Rava, the Olam, Yomod, Adam, Torah, the Achar, Kach, Yege. A person should always, um, first study Torah and then go Be'iun, right? First, get like a peripheral understanding and then go into the, uh, depths 
of what you're uh, doing. Very cool. Very, very cool stuff. Because also, like, if you only want to get to the depths right away, so sometimes that could prevent, could prevent you from even starting, right, or getting too far, or accomplishing, right? Sometimes if you just kind of keep things moving, then you can come back to it and go deeper. But sometimes if you just kind of get stuck at the beginning, so then, you know, you might just get kicked off real early. Amr de Verabiyane, they say by the Bismedjus of Verabiyane, what is that which says, Kimitz chalav yotzi chema, that churning milk uh, creates butter. Umitz af yotzi dam, basically squeezing your nose too much is going to cause it to bleed. Umitz apaim yotzi riv, and if you kind of like squeeze anger, so then fighting will come out of that. chema shal Torah, in who do you find the cream, the butter of Torah? B'misha meki chalav shiyonak mishte imu alea. Somebody who's willing to vomit out the milk that he nursed from his mother on it. Meaning, I think the point is that, similar to like what Reish Lakish was saying, that, you know, you know even if you're, you're, you, you'll, you'll accomplish in Torah, if you're willing to like kill yourself over it, if you're willing to give up everything in order to study Torah and understand Torah. Umitz af, yotzi dam. And um, uh, what does it mean that sort of, I don't know, squeezing your nose? Or so af is also anger, right? So yotzi dam, that will have a result of blood. So, 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 any student who his teacher gets angry at him and he's able to su- sort of um, accept it as accept the rebuke and not just run off. So then, he will be a tamar chacham and he'll be able to tell the difference between um, 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 tamay uh, nida blood and tahor nida blood. I.e., he will become a tamar chacham. Umitz apay miotzi riv and the um, uh, a paim, right? And if you have like a lot of anger, yotzi riv, then it will have a result of riv. What does that mean? vishnia, right? If it's a paim, if, if you have a student who is able to handle it when his, when his teacher gets angry even multiple times, vishosek, and he's quiet and he accepts it, he will be a tamachacham on the level that we will be able to tell the difference between Dine uh, Mamnos, monetary matters and, and capital matters, i.e., he'll be a, a, a big Tamil Chacham and a big Dayan. Uh, the Tanan, as we learn in the Mishnah, Rabbi Shmuel, Omer says, Rabbi Shmuel, if a person wants to become wise, wants to become very smart, Yasuk with Dine Mamnos, he should learn Dine Mamnos, right? Bavakama, Bavmitsiya, all that stuff. She'ain Lecha Miksoa Batora Yosa, man, because you don't have um, a sort of a, 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 a part of the Torah that is more. Um, Sort of significant, more difficult, more more lofty, I guess, than them. Shein kemayon ovia, because they are like a um, flowing, strengthening spring. I'm Rabbi Shmuel Ben Achmani. Says Rabbi Shmuel Ben Achmani. My dear, say what does the pasuk mean? Im navalta beis nase, vim zamosa yad lepe. So kol min abel atzma al divrei Torah sofer leis nase. Anybody who sort of make you know disgraces himself on Divrei Torah, i.e., he's, he's he's happy to ask questions, right? He's not embarrassed that well. If I ask this question, maybe people are going to make fun of me. No, the only way to grow in Torah is to be able to ask the silly questions and make himself, you know, risk run, making a fool of himself. But then so for this nothing, then he's going to be a great Torah scholar. Vim zamam, but if he kept his, if he muzzled his mouth, if he kept if he kept quiet, it was then then yad the pet. Well, then when somebody comes to ask him a Torah, he will, uh, a, a question, he won't know the answer. He'll have to cover his mouth. And he won't be able to answer. But if he would have um, not, you know, not cared too much about his ego and um, asked the questions, he would have learned, and he, you know, he would be able to um, share it with others and, and be great. So Rabbi Nehemiah then um, took the microphone from Rabbi Yehuda, and he then opened up in the honor of the host Vidarash, and he expounded. What is the pasuk says? Vayom Lakeni that when Shaul was um, fighting Amalek and destroying Amalek, he said to the descendants of Yisro, Lechu suru, go get out of here, redu mitoch Amaleki, get away from the Amalek people. Pen osifcha imo, lest I, uh, you know, end up killing you with them, because I won't be able to differentiate while I'm in battle. Ba'ata asisa chesed kobene Yisrael, and you have done, right, and your ancestor Yisro did chesed with all of Bnei Yisrael, and Rashi says, as it says that, um, that they all ate, right, he provided bread for them, and he sustained them, he gave them food. Yisra, who only brought, you know, brought close Moshe, or came to Moshe for his own honor, kach, and yet, because he hosted Moshe and fed them, that is how he was rewarded, that even his, you know, generations later, we were still repaying the, the favor. Somebody, a host, 
who 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 hosts Tamir Chachamim in his house, umachilo umashkeu umehaneu, and he um, gives him food and drink and and gives him benefit from his possessions. Minchasav alachas kam v'chama. Certainly, he will be rewarded very very handsomely. Pasach Rabbi Yosi b'chvod achzania. Rabbi Yosi then opened up in the honor of the host Vidarash, and he expanded. Lo t'sayv adom mikiachicha hu lo t'sayv mitzri kigeriyis ba'artzo. The Pasuk says, do not sort of uh, act negatively towards an Edomite because he's your brother, Esav, and do not act negatively towards an Egyptian because you are, uh, after all, an alien in his um, country. Right, the Mitzrayim, who only brought the, the Jews close for their own needs, for their own benefits, Shenemar, as it says, Right, that Paro, when the brothers of Yosef came to Egypt, he says, and if you know that any of them are very strong, so we can put them in my military. So he was really only looking for his own benefit, kach. And yet, for all generations, we say that you shouldn't act negatively towards an Egyptian because he hosted you. So a host who hosts some of the and he gives them, you know, food and drink and lets them benefit from his possessions, from his property, certainly then. Um, um, you know, he will be rewarded handsomely by God for many generations. Okay, and with that, we, uh, we're gonna stop here on Da'af Samach Gimel. I look forward to meeting, seeing everybody tomorrow for the final page of, or really the final Amud of Masech Tabrachos, Da'af Samach Dalit. Um, so yeah, there were some cool Agaritas today about kind of, you know, perspectives towards learning Torah, studying Torah. And um, the other cool drushas and agaditas that we've, uh, yeah, continuation of sort of lots of the agadic theme of this chapter. Um, Cool. I hope you guys have a sweet, sweet, sweet day. Peace.